Welcome back everybody to R44's YouTube channel. Today is probably my most exciting day. Um, it's brakes, 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 brakes. But, so, G80 M3, um, this is our X-Drive Mexico blue car, sitting on around 3,000 miles now, uh, running a stage two from Tom Wrigley and ourselves here at R44. Running about 720 horsepower, 0 to 60, 2.3 seconds, uh, quarter mile and about 9.8, I believe, Dylan. So, it's a fast car, which needs brakes. Whether it is a modified car or a stock car, um, brakes are essential depending on what you're going to do with it. So let's have a look what we have in front of us. We have a brand called EBC. If you haven't heard of them, I don't know what you're doing. If you have, that's good to hear. Um, we've got the full array here. Um, let's just walk through what we have. Two-piece discs. So throw back to March 2021 when we received our first M3, um, we were doing non-stop track testing. So we were testing our exhaust system, the R44 exhaust, and our aerodynamic parts to make sure they can withstand speed um, and just getting feedback from people at track days because they are obviously enthusiasts and they can give us feedback on the design. We kept having issues about uh, lost for words now, warping of the disc. So the front disc on the G80 is probably because of my hard braking, my poor respect for the car, but all in all, we just kept having issues. So we replaced about three sets of discs straight away within the first two months of owning the car. Um, and that was primarily because the OEM discs, the way they cool down um, and they hold the heat isn't, isn't the best. And the materials they use aren't the best and they cause a lot of warping. And then this will be when you're going about six, you know, 60 miles per hour, you slightly press the brake, you'll feel a bit of vibration and that is a warp brake. So we spoke to the guys at EBC, lent them our car and said, look, can you make a two piece disc? Um, these have been really good on the F series cars. And they said, yeah, no problem. They got ahead and um, made the disc. So they started off with this one here. So this is the front two piece disc. So you've got full replacement um, bells and discs that are detachable. So the best thing, first of all, is wear and tear. So when this is worn out, you can just replace the outer and you keep the bell. So you reduce cost, as well as the materials used, the cooling is much better. Uh, so yeah, we put these on about, say June time, 2021, and ran them up until now on our old car and had kept the same set of discs for about 20 track days, which is unbelievable. Um, so we are now gonna put this on the Mexico car. So this is the, the front discs. The size is the same. Um, everything else is pretty much the same. It's just primarily the materials and um, the pros of running a two-piece disc. They've then gone on to develop the rears. So we haven't um, actually had this on our car on track days, but they've had it on cars testing um, and the feedback's been great, but this is essential. Replace the rears. Obviously they look loads better. They're all black, They're black bells compared to the rusty uh, originals. Um, so we've got rears to go on and front discs. Because this is our track car and it's quite a fast car, we'll be using the RP, I think we're going for the RPX pads. So we're going RPX pads on the front and the rear. These are their race pads. So they're not, you know, elite, they're illegal to use on the street. Um, and they do cause a lot, quite a bit of noise, but if you want to stop, these things will stop straight away. So um, I've been using these for, yeah, a good year now on all the track cars that we have and the stopping performance is unbelievable. If you ask anybody that's been on track day with us, they'll know that we use our brakes a lot. We kind of late brake as much as possible, jump on the anchors and they stop. So we've got front pads, rear pads. EBC obviously do a range of replacement pads from yellow stuff to blue stuff to the racing line. So I recommend if you, you know, you're on UK track days and you want something, a blue stuff's a good pad or what I highly recommend doing is going with your OEM pads, pairing up with some of these race pads, put the race pads on for a track day, your car will stop properly, um, you can rely on the brake pads and then just go and change them after. Um, we'll show you the install, it's pretty simple. Um, but yeah, that is the, um, the, this is kind of the race setup. So if you're going for a track day, this is what I highly recommend. Um, you will lose the use of your wear sensors, so they won't clip into the race pads. So we're just gonna tie them up and then we'll look at what warnings come up and see how we can kind of code them out of the OEM system. Um, and that's about it. I think we're gonna get straight into the install. Once the wheel's off, we can show you what they look like in comparison, our 2,000 mile, 3,000 mile brakes, what they look like compared to the lovely EBC setup. Um, and cost-wise, I believe these pads are near on the same cost of an OEM pad, uh, disc, sorry, um, and you're getting an aftermarket disc, better performance, better styling, and just overall better. Let's go. 
happening everybody we've now got the wheel off um, we're repping our BIMEC stud and nut kit which just have been a dream uh, for kind of this kind of work taking things on and off quickly um, but let's quickly show you what the process is first we are going to tap these little um, pins out so we can release the brakes do that now that way it's all been released the next there's two 14 mil nuts in the back um, so just release those off the back pull apart your brake pads and then you can pull off the caliper and hang it on your suspension and then we're going to take these two bolts out and then pull the brake disc off and put the brake disc back on so let's quickly smash this out um, we'll showcase it in a bit of a cleaner style um, and we will speak to you guys in a bit All right, so we are now on the rear. So the fronts are complete, nice and easy. The rear is slightly different. So what we use is our launch or uh, ISTA uh, diagnostic system to release the rear brake. You can do it with OEM software, but it's not very reliable. Um, it's a bit hard sometimes, so it's easier for us to use our diagnostic equipment. So we release the electronic brake um, so it retracts all the way. Um, so once that's done, the vehicle's in service mode um, and that's it. So now we're gonna remove the wheel um, and then we'll just remove the caliper Again, pull it off, remove the disc, replace the pads, put, replace the disc. Easy peasy, so let's go. A little bit of a disclaimer, we actually had the F80 brakes on the bench. Um, so EBC don't currently have the RPX pads for the rear, and that's primarily because of the wear rate on the rear of the G80 is crazy. So the blue pads are a better pad. I think if we had such a coarse pad on the rear, um, I don't know what, why, but the G80 and the G82 platform um, just wear through rear pads, so the bias must be quite high on the rear. Um, so in testing and stuff, the blue pad seems to work. So we're gonna run RPX on the front, blue pads on the rear. This is what we ran previously, um, and it's, it's always good. Um, but yeah, you'll see the rear of your car will wear out more, um, so you're actually saving money as well. So boom, we actually use a lot of, we use this grease here um, to add some lube. So any of the contact points on the brake pads, we add some of this grease to prevent any you know unwanted noises. Obviously, you'll get a bit of noise where the pad is um, Obviously, very prepared for this job. We've got no grease left. Um, but there we go. So we just put it on all contact points for the brake pad, spread this round with a flathead screwdriver, and this will just prevent any kind of unwanted noises other than the actual um, pad and disc working together. Don't need to go anything too. Don't mind if you go a bit mad on it. Um, don't use copper grease. Um, it's not the best thing. This is the best grease. Um, have a look. You can just look online for brake grease um, and it's, it's available. It's just copper grease is not the best. And then just slide this in. We can retain the uh, wear sensor now, so which is pretty cool um, on the rear, but not the front. So we'll talk about that later on. But yeah, we've obviously got the new pad on. Look how good it looks. Uh, new disc. And then um, just get your disc in there. Slide it in. New pad. Wow. Long day already here. Huh? brakes galore slide that in nice and easy fit of course from ebc um and then we'll slide in the other side so let's catch you in a minute once these are all fitted what's happening everybody we are now done very very pleased to be honest i'm very more than happy look how beautiful this setup looks and the cost of it considering you're getting an uprated disc uprated pad better performance Styling's better for the money that you're paying. It's unbelievable. So EBC again, you know, they, people say that they're not the best. I think they do the job so well, and especially the two-piece discs. They've just smashed it. The price is really good. They're made in the UK. The quality is unbelievable. We've never had one issue or one question about the quality of them in terms of, let's say, a nut's been loose or anything like that. So yeah, quality is really good. Obviously, if you have an F-Series, you're watching this video, check our website and um or to our youtube and see that we've obviously fitted these to our f series or f80 that's running about 650 horsepower um and is our primary track car um but yeah if you have a g series you want to upgrade your brakes even if you just want to change your discs 
because they're worn out or they're warped, just change these, go back to OEM pads, build your way up. But there you go. Find us next time. We are going to upgrade our lines and fluid. But first of all, we're going to go and enjoy this. This car is 3,000 miles old. Once it's about two or three track days down, we bake the fluid and we'll change it. But for now, I want to try an OEM setup here and then aftermarket here and see how it performs. Take care, guys. I'll catch you. All right, welcome back, everybody. We are now in the M3. Um, so we installed the brakes last week. We had the weekend where we went on a little bit of a road trip and bedded the brakes in. So it's just a process. Of, what I tend to do is um, I use the motorway um, just to do some, just a, a mixture of kind of braking styles. So some high speeds, initially going up to high speed and just holding the brake on, getting them to bed in a little bit, get the top surfaces worn off and then go through some hard braking, get them up to temperature a little bit. Um, you just wanna give them a little bit of temperature cycle. Don't go straight into some hard braking. Um, you will just cause yourself problems. Um, but we'll see what we can do. I think in the future, we'll, what we'll do once we're on a racetrack, we'll do some comparisons on how like 0 to 60 stops. Um, it's just after work today, so there's a bit more free space um, on the road so we can kind of get this car up to speed a little bit, put the brakes on, and see kind of the performance of the brakes. But I must say, using them over the weekend, having people in the car, they're quite impressive. We were actually also at another workshop that has an M3, and they drove this um, to try and see the power. Um, since we've mapped it, and they were blown away with the brakes, and they've uh, gone ahead and ordered the set. So it's definitely something. So mine, my JQ paddles, they're quite, a little racket but let's put it in sport mode drop the window a little bit so we can hear it brakes are so good um the tires actually will slip in there so let's um get some temperatures up into the brakes just simply just kind of obviously this is just a little bit of a quick road comparison let's see if we'll open the valve a little bit just some noise These brakes are designed for a racetrack. The, the cold braking performance is pretty much just a step under OEM potentially. They will bite, to be honest. It's kind of like carbon ceramic. If you're driving a, driving a carbon ceramic brake, initially is not a great deal of bite, but it will come in um, until you get up to temps and it will throw you forward. And obviously if you're going very slow, like moving out of a garage, you press the brakes, it will jump forward. Um, and the more heat you get through them, they actually get better. Um, we're just in some traffic now, but we'll get them up for speed. Um, but yeah, we're running them on standard lines and fluid, as we kind of said earlier. Uh, just because what I want to do really, I want to get the car out. This car's got 3,000 miles on it. Um, I want to get out onto a racetrack and see what the performance is like with an upgraded pad and disc on a stock line and fluid. So that way we can recommend you guys um, what kind of we recommend, you know, I'd rather not sell you lines and fluid if your car's brand new if you just want to get some braking performance, run that for a little bit, boil your fluid in your lines, come back instead of just wasting the money and wasting the brand new fluid. Because fluid is expensive when you start adding in the labor time to change them over, um, as well as the um, kind of the, the actual material. But it's actually quite cool. So we've got an M4 coming up towards us. So it's got the Evero carbon front lip, front canards with the two twin, like the two fins. Really cool. Let's have a little, uh, have a little play with him. Over the GT front lip as well. Yeah, really strong performance for race track, but let's uh, get some speed. So we're doing 60 now, and then we're going to jam on the brakes. Ready? 3, 2, 1. You can just feel the actual wheels like juddering. Um, and that is primarily just the wheels are ready to lock up because the brakes are so efficient and stuff. So. now uh, with the Grail exhausts kind of fine tuned with the 200 cell cats sounds unreal um, but yeah the brake pedal just feels so good really responsive um, and it's only gonna get better like I, I think the, the brakes have done 300 300 miles motorway driving um, to and from a show on the weekend so not a great deal they'll get better um, but I highly recommend get them on get them bedded in 
I bedded them in on the way to the racetrack before and then just get them on track and you'll see that they'll just keep getting better and better. You'll start getting the noise coming in from the racing pads more after a track day or two. Uh, once you really get some temperatures in them, they will squeak. Um, but they potentially might if you don't use them too hard. So you'll see if you're squeaking. If you're not squeaking, you're not using them enough. So that's the main thing. Obviously when I had some racing tuition, um, you know, some of the key points that I pulled from it was just, you know, point to that apex, get there and get those brakes off. Um, and try not to like hover on your brake, kind of, you're either on the throttle or you're not, um, instead of trying to come in on the throttle and then hold the brakes for a little while and then jump on them, you're better off just coming in, letting off ever so slightly and then jumping on the brake before tail. Um, and getting stopped and around that corner or slowing down. But let's see if we can get up to some speed, get these brakes on. See, there's obviously a lot of um, options on the market in general. Obviously, you've got Paget. I'd say Paget, Ferrero, DS1.11s, 11.1s um, are a really good, kind of on par with these um, in terms of like competition on that kind of level, like a very, like a track based, track day based pad. Um, and then you've got the Paget RS29, but again, it's the price point that really, I feel like the RPXs are really up there in terms of performance and then the price is you know down there whereas RS 29s are like up here and then the price is up here so it's it's important I think especially for people that are just like three four track days a year but they want the performance but they don't want the expense these are the you know the best pads you can run them it's not recommended you run them every day it's best that you just run them on the racetrack swap them over the, the process of swapping them over is easy so it's best to do that um, but let's in them and just yeah I think the main thing is getting out on a racetrack and showcasing them so guys and girls I'm gonna wrap this up here um, if you have any questions regarding braking just hit us up on the sales line either sales at info at our, our sales at r44 performance or info at r44 performance.co.uk um, we'll sort you guys out wherever you are in the world um, we can take care of you and yeah any questions hit them up I hope you guys enjoy the video check out what's next check out some of the mapping videos um, 